Okay, welcome back. We're about to start a new chapter today. We're going to start chapter 4. It's entitled The Arrangement of Electrons in Atoms. Now we just wrapped up chapter 3, which was the basics of the atomic theory. Um, the model we ended up with, as you recall, um, let's see, had protons and neutrons in the nucleus, and electrons buzzed around the outside of the nucleus. We called that the planetary model. And that was the Rutherford model of the atom. And believe it or not, that's not our current model of the atom. It's actually considerably, well, at least the arrangement of electrons that orbit the nucleus is considerably more complicated um, than what Rutherford had originally thought. Now, before we can proceed any further into um, atomic theory, we need to understand a little bit about the nature of light. So we're going to delve into physics land for the day. Um, and we're going to discuss light and the nature of light. Um, we're going to give a brief overview. You'd get a much more detailed overview um, in, in physics. Uh, those of you students that have had physics before, this will be um, a considerable amount of review for you. So to understand further advances in atomic theory, a light discussion on the nature of light must occur. Now there are two variables that relate to a beam of light. These variables are wavelength, which is symbolized by the Greek letter lambda. It sort of kind of looks like an upside down Y, doesn't it? Lambda. And frequency, which is symbolized by the Greek letter nu, which sort of looks like, I don't know, a seagull that you might draw if you're a really ridiculously bad artist. Um, here, let me just show you something quickly. If I were to take wavelength, lambda times frequency nu um, wavelength is measured in the SI unit of length which is the meter and I'm multiplying it by frequency and the SI unit for frequency is the Hertz or cycle per second we omit the term cycle and we like to write 1 over second it just makes the math look prettier if I multiply the wavelength of light times its frequency I'm multiplying the unit meters times 1 over second, and I get a velocity unit. In fact, this is the velocity of light, isn't it? Now, some of you already know what the velocity of light is, 186,000 miles per second. Well, we like to use meters per second in science. So the value of the velocity of light, well, to three significant figures is 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Or, if you'd like, 3.00 times 10 to the 10th centimeters per second, and is a constant. So if this number is constant and not changing, if we know one of these other two, either the wavelength or the frequency, we can calculate the one that's missing. And that's what we're going to do on our next homework assignment. Now, before I do a few sample calculations, I do want to talk a little bit more about exactly what wavelength and frequency are and how they're related to each other. This is sort of important, so pay close attention, okay? I have drawn, well, I haven't drawn, I have illustrated, or have illustrated, three different waves on my notes here. And I'll do this one a little bit darker to make sure you can see it. So there's a wave. And you can see there's a certain distance between crests on the wave, between here and here. So there's a crest, and the neighboring crest, if I pick the same point, the distance between those two is the wavelength. Okay, I'm going to symbolize that by the Greek letter lambda. Now, it doesn't have to be crest to crest. It could be the distance from trough to trough, or two similar points on adjacent waves. Those distances should be the same, and that's the wavelength of that wave. See, this wavelength here appears to be shorter, doesn't it? And this wavelength here appears to be the shortest of the three. So, as wavelength gets shorter, how does that relate to the frequency of the wave, or the number of oscillations per unit time? Well, this is one second in time from here to here. And you can see that this particular wave goes through one, two, three, four cycles. So we'd say that's four cycles per second.
And I don't have my ruler out, but I could measure that wavelength. And you can see once again that it's going to be the largest wavelength of the three. Let's take a look at the second wave. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cycles per second. So the wavelength's smaller and the number of cycles per second is getting bigger. The last one, trust me on this, if I were to count these, I end up with 16 cycles per second. Now the important point here is this. As wavelength gets smaller, frequency increases. We call that an inverse relationship. When one goes up, the other goes down, and vice versa. And that's an important relationship. So as wavelength gets bigger, frequency gets smaller, and that makes sense because the product of the two always has to equal the same number. So if one gets bigger, the other has to get smaller so we can equal that constant. Now once again, if I know one of these two, since the velocity of light is a constant, I should be able to solve for the one that's missing. So let's take a look at example number one. What is the frequency of a beam of red light which has a wavelength of 675 nanometers? Now remember we have this equation here, lambda times nu equals c. Now once again, c is the speed of light, and we'll record that to three significant figures, 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Okay, so I'm giving you wavelength. Let's start with that, 675 nanometers. And um, I'm going to hop out of nanometers, kiddos. And I am going to get into meters here. Let's see if I'm hitting at the right tree here. One meter, as you know, is 10 to the ninth nanometers. Uh, looks like I'm going down the wrong road here. Let's see if I continue with this. I would go from meters to seconds, and I could use that as a conversion factor. And what unit would that give me? Well, if I plugged in the speed of light here, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, that would give me a time unit, seconds. Is that my unit of frequency? Think about that for a minute. It's not, is it? My unit of frequency is 1 over seconds, not seconds. So, let's not do it that way. Let's think a little bit more. Let's see, if I'm solving for frequency, wouldn't frequency be equal to C divided by lambda? Let's see if the units work on that one, okay? So let's separate this. We know that that's the wrong way to approach this problem. Let's try to use this equation and take the speed of light divided by the wavelength. According to this equation, frequency should be C divided by lambda. So let's try that out. We'll start with 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And we're going to divide by the wavelength. 675 nanometers. Hmm, that's still not working out very pretty for me because meters do not divide out nanometers, do they? So let's add another step here. Let's hop out of nanometers and get into meters. One meter is a billion nanometers. So let's make sure the units work here. Meters divide out now, and nanometers divide out. Let's inspect the units on top. Everything's divided out on top, so the unit is 1, and I have seconds on the bottom. Hey, that's good. That is my unit for frequency. So this looks like the right way to handle this problem. Let's see what we end up with here, okay? Let's clear this out. We have 3 second e e to the 8th divided by 675 times 10 carat key 9. We end up with 4.44, that has three sig figs in it, times 10 to the 14th cycles per second. 4.44. And the unit we like to say, we, we use 1 over second, but that's cycles per second. Now, boy, I should have printed this off in color for you. There's a nice pretty color one of these charts um, in your textbook. And you can see if something has uh, a frequency that is uh, 10 to the 14th, well, 
Let's see, that doesn't help us out here because this is a wavelength. So 675 nanometers is going to be somewhere around in here uh, in the visible spectrum. So maybe on the next lecture I'll print out one that's prettier than this. Or you guys can look at the one in your textbook. Okay. Let's try number two. Let's try doing this the right way at the beginning instead of fixing it at the end. Okay. This time I want to solve for wavelength. So frequency, or excuse me, lambda times nu equals the speed of light. And this time we want to solve for lambda. So using my advanced Algebra 1 skills, if I'm solving for lambda, wouldn't that be C divided by the frequency? So the speed of light divided by the frequency. And we should get a unit um, of length, shouldn't we, when I'm all done? Let's try it out, C. That's my speed of light, 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And I'm dividing it by the frequency, which is 2.7 times 10 to the 14th. Now, seconds to the negative first is the same as 1 over seconds. So the unit 1 goes with num number here, and seconds would pop up on top since I'm dividing by it. So you can see seconds divide out. And I'm left with my unit of meters. Let's see what we end up with here. 3 second EE to the 8th divided by 2.7 second EE to the 14th. We end up with, to 3 sig figs, 1.11 times 10 to the negative 6 meters, which, by the way, is 1,100 and let's see, we have to multiply that by the third, 110 nanometers. Okay, hopefully I did my math right there. Let's see if we go from meters to nanometers. We have one meter and that's 10 to the ninth nanometers. So we'd increase that by three powers of 10. Let's just see what that is. I think I might have made a mistake times 10 carat key 9, yeah, 1,110 to 3 significant figures. We're okay. And that's what the value would be in meters. Okay, let's do one more. Uh, once again, as, you, as you're watching this, you can pause the video, try these on your own, and then check your work with my work to see if you're doing it correctly. This time I want to solve for frequency. So remember, lambda nu equals the speed of light. So if we're solving for frequency, we want to take C over lambda. So C, 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. We're dividing it by the wavelength, 450 nanometers. And the units don't work yet. Meters and nanometers don't cancel each other out. So we have to hop out of nanometers and get into meters down here. One meter is a billion nanometers. So now nanometers divide out, and now meters divide out. I don't have any units on top. They've divided out, so that's one. And the only unit I have left on the bottom is seconds. So that's my unit for frequency. So I've done it. My setup is correct. So 3 second EE to the 8th divided by 450 times 10 carat key 9 gives me to three significant figures, 6.67 times 10 to the 14th cycles per second. Now you'll be doing several of these for homework. Take careful notes. Watch this several times. Um, you can even, if you know the frequency, you can compare it to a chart that lists frequency uh, and color, and you can determine what color of visible light that relates to. All right, I think what I'm going to do before I proceed is I'm going to do some of your homework for you coming up so you guys are able to get some practice here before we progress because we need to understand a little bit about frequency and wavelength before we can understand the behavior of electrons as they buzz around the nucleus of the atom. All right, thanks for your attention. See you in class. Bye-bye.